Hello there, this is Oscar Mikey and welcome back to this Granada Re Reconquista Iron Man achievement run. We're just off the back of having won a very successful war with Castile and we're just in the process of finishing up some cores. It will take a while to accrue the necessary administrative the monarch part to get those cores completed. But once they are, that's going to free ourselves up for another offensive war. And as you can see, we are now well over the 50% watermark in terms of completing the conquest of the Iberian Peninsula. And to put it plainly, we are very, very close to our goal indeed. We're almost there. With that said, and as I've been saying throughout, the biggest challenges probably lie in the immediate future. I already said that I'm going to uh, almost certainly declare war on Tunis, even if that has the effect of bringing in the Ottomans as a defensive alliance. So that is a very interesting conflict that probably lies in the immediate horizon. We're going to have to see how that goes. Also, have to take into consideration the high uh, likelihood that in our next war against Castile, France may join the call to arms because they have once again, for the third time, entered into a coalition against us. And this time, I'm not entirely sure if we can avoid triggering them to act on behalf of Castile. But we'll have to see. In the meantime, I am going to make good on the relative period of peace and ensure that we uh, overdrive our economy so that we have the sufficient resources and manpower to uh, be successful in the upcoming wars. And we have a, another rival slot that's opened up to us now that Castile is no longer our rival. And we're doing fine in the power projection front. Truce between Austria and Great Britain. Well, we don't want to enter into a conflict with Austria anytime soon. So probably Great Britain's the best choice, given the fact that we can easily send some trade ships over to the English Channel and start privateering, boosting our power projection up even more. And in the meantime, while we have some downtime, I will go ahead and start constructing a few buildings here and there. Also, this is something I probably should have done at the very start, creating templates for 10 trade ships. Very handy to have, given the fact that we've lost so many trade ships in the prior wars. That was a little unfortunate, but we can easily rebuild them. We're finally starting to make any decent money. Comet sided. There's a familiar event, so we'll take one civility. Hit. Not even a bother reading decisions. I know I'm pretty much off by heart. Now we have some rebels causing trouble, Portuguese separatists in particular, but we're not really at this stage where we're threatened by rebels anymore. We got a few cores constructed, we got a few more to go. Built a few more galleys as well. I'm partially building these galleys in preparation for our showdown with the Ottomans, which is fast approaching. It's going to be absolutely critical that we maintain our naval superiority. And look at that, Brazil declared independence uh, in no small part thanks to my effort beating up Castile. And they have actually created quite a large nation. And looking from their ideas, those are actually incredibly strong ideas. Idea, uh, reduce cost, increase Republican tradition. You know, those are some pretty nice ideas right there. So who knows, Brazil has cut out on its own and it may do extremely well going forward. It is quite early for a revolutionary, revolutionary war nonetheless. Alright, so here come the rebels. Let's marshal up our forces and be prepared to uh, crush them as they rise up. We have access to one fairly solid general, 4-4. And we'll try and keep him around for as long as possible. And in the meantime, just continue fabricating claims against Castile. Reducing the subsequent cost of coin those provinces by 10% for each fabricated claim. Easily worth it. Uh, you will save a lot of monarch power in the long term by doing that. Yep, Ottomans will certainly help Tunis out if we declare war on them. Uh, 
it has occurred to me that there are a number of options available to us in order to try and acquire the territory from Tunis without triggering the Ottomans. There's two things we can do. Number one, I suppose we could threaten war, but I consider that a pretty big long shot. The better alternative would be to declare war and call in the Ottomans and then immediately declare war in Tunis. But, you know, that might not be as fun and... I'm really getting to the stage where I'm pretty confident about the power of our army, so we might want to actually force a deliberate showdown with the Ottomans just to demonstrate how far we've come. We'll see, close to the time. Either way, I'm not particularly worried about the Ottomans, although obviously France do re represent quite a big threat. Right, so these rebels have risen up. Uh, we are doing a heck of a lot of damage here, and we should be able to crush them fairly easily. Yeah, there you go. Alright, back to... core construction, and basically just, again, building up our developments and constructing additional buildings. Truce with Castile is not going to expire until 1622, so we have nine years to wait. Come to think of it, probably not a bad idea keeping these fortifications active. And I'm going to continue constructing even improved fortifications in those hilly, mountainous provinces where fortifications get a ton of defensive bonuses. So I'll do that right away. That way, if France does elect to attack us, which is again a strong possibility given the fact that they're in a coalition, they will have a hard time breaking through our mountain fortifications. That's just going to buy me time to respond. Once they're in those hills, it's going to be impossible to dislodge. Because I'm not going to be able to take offensive battles against the French defending those mountains. Uh, now that's the downside. So I probably just let those fortifications fall and then counterattack them as they move into better, uh, better flat terrain. Nation of Tunis has become West Nice. Took them quite a long while to do. We got it completed uh, much, much quicker, but that is something to take into consideration. They are probably very far behind in tech, uh, which makes them all the more easier a target for our aggressive intentions. And we'll go and send our newly constructed trade ships out, uh, protecting trade. As for galleys, we'll continue building them up and make sure they're all mothballed as well. Another core constructed. We are on minus one stability, but I want to save all that administered monarch power for now. One more to go, and we're almost there. There we go. That's all our cores under construction. Or pending completion. Checking our interactions. Gotta wait a little while until we make use of the next ones. Some really high development provinces here we've recently conquered. That's going to help us considerably. So I'll make sure to construct buildings in those going forward. The stronger our economy is, the higher the probability that we overcome the last major challenges facing us. I actually decided to delete a fortification in that province because it didn't have access to mountains and I don't consider building fortifications in non-mountainous provinces worthwhile. The benefits of increased defensiveness from mountains is just too strong to forgo. Also means uh, higher attrition because mountainous provinces necessarily have lower supply limit and so higher attrition inflicted on the enemies. Good harvest, administered monarch power, not going to say no to that. We're getting a lot of those good harvest events thus far. We've got a national focus, still an administrative take into consideration the fact that we are quite far behind 
uh, having spent so much of our resources in core construction. Yeah, highlands, these are the type of provinces you want to build some fortifications. And building a few fortifications straddling the Tunis border is probably not a bad idea, especially since that is a uh, conduit from which the Ottomans can attack us later on. I'm really concentrating all my resources on uh, ensuring that if the Ottomans or France does attack me, they're blunted, because right now they're our only threats, essentially. And if we can neutralize them, there's nothing that can stand in our way. Milan has joined the coalition against us as well. So it's probably a good idea to keep an eye on it. Now that is a pretty hefty coalition. We would be able to repel it, probably. Um, but it would be tricky. So we'll have to keep an eye on that for now, at least. Borrowing increases. We've seen a heck of a lot of these events. Yep, yeah, even though our inflation isn't that high... Um, I could probably be as well advised taking the autonomy hit, because I don't particularly want to spend some administrative monarch power now. Uh, Klima tells of doomsday. Not really privy to the sort of uh, complexities of the Native American decisions and events, simply because I haven't really played them all that much, haven't really seen the need to. Um, there we go. Culture accepted, Portuguese. Now that's the reason why we picked Humanist Idea Group, if you remember. Having the accepted culture is just such a huge benefit. Really does boost your manpower, your tax income, lowers revolt risk, increases trade power, all the good stuff you need. Making sure we get the best value possible out of our fledgling empire. And we'll continue fabricating these claims. Can select a new mission. Don't particularly want to go after the mission Conquer Garam since we haven't had much success getting that done in the past. So we'll wait a while and see if we can get a new mission. Something I did forget to do is embargo Tunis, but we've made sure to do that now, and that's going to boost our power projection up a little more. Yep, for the most part, it's just biding our time. I can't imagine we're going to be uh, waiting much longer in order to get the achievement. But I would like to wait for a course to construct. And our next target's probably going to be Castile. Which we're going to have to wait until 1622. Uh, which is when the... When the truce timer expires. Alright, so we can get through our interactions again. Uh, we would... Be best advised boosting our influence above 50%. It does mean we're going to have to take a bunch of autonomy hits in these provinces. With that said, it's worth it for the additional monarch part, in my opinion. There's another province converting to the reform religion. Just check, I want a low value province preferably to add these estates in so that the autonomy isn't going to uh, be much of a penalty on my economy or manpower or trade power or anything like that. Uh, that's not the best province but we'll take it. Meantime, still getting all those mission aids converted. Yes, okay, we'll do it. 100 Minister Monarch Power. And a 100 Military Power. Just checking to see if we could get our influence up to the state where we could get... I believe if it's above 75%, you get 150. But that's pushing it a bit close. We've already had one dominance event as part of this playthrough. Don't particularly want to revisit that uh, notorious episode. So we'll... 
We'll play it safe for now. Yeah, how far we've come indeed. Our total land force limits are now a very respectable 72. It was a long time when they were hovering around 8 or 9. Uh, Flanders tells of joining the Republic. Interesting. They did, of course, uh, secede from Austria. And it looks like, now they, as always, they launch a bunch of t lose a bunch of territory from being beaten up by the Austrians. But the Austrians don't actually have enough war score to fully annex the territory. So they are hanging on there. Uh, we'll see how long they hang on for. Not expecting any miracles from the Dutch Republic. But it'll just be interesting to see. Alright, not going to say no to two base manpower. See which province it is. Yep, that's going to be a high value province indeed. Uh, does have high autonomy, but. Okay, that's interesting. So, something I failed to take into consideration, which is actually quite important. I just noticed that that province had 75% autonomy. Now that's interesting, of course, it looks like we're getting the, uh, but this province is 37.4% autonomy. Interesting, so I didn't think that the overseas autonomy penalty would apply for, uh, man, I'm really going to have to read up on the rules of what counts as overseas, because I know it keeps changing, uh, obviously, our territory, even though it's across the Strait of Gibraltar, doesn't currently uh, constitute distance overseas. So, obviously, it must be if your provinces are linked by a single sea tile, it doesn't count as overseas. If it's more than that, it probably does. Which means some of my islands, I, that's just my speculation, I'm going to have to read up on the rules. Which probably means some of my islands on the west coast of Africa do not have 75% autonomy, but others would. I think that's how it works. All our African territories obviously linked. Um, to our capital in the same continent, so we don't have any problems there. Be interesting to read up on that rule and see exactly what counts as overseas now. Another, a, another potential enemy joins the ever growing coalition arrayed against us. Good to know that coalition's getting stronger by the day. With that said, we've completed our very impressive array of fortifications in the north, and that will protect us, for the most part, against any type of coalition, at least for a while. I imagine those fortifications in the hills can last a very long time. New idea group is going to be uh, coming up soon. Probably invest in another military idea group. I haven't entirely made up my mind. Can't see myself deriving much benefit from another administrative or diplomatic idea group. The games I've picked trade as an idea group, I tend to have regretted that decision quite considerably. Alright, we've got excess diplomatic monarch power, so it's always a good idea to get rid of some of this by boosting development. In provinces where we have both low autonomy, if possible, and also where the goods produced are high value, like cloth, copper, sugar, these are the go-to trade goods uh, that are extremely valuable to us. Four years to go until that truce expires. They will probably enter a coalition against us immediately once the truce expires. Looking forward to that. 
Heck, at least the Ottomans are doing rather well over there in the east. Um, typically, they get extremely strong, and then eventually they're sort of beaten up by the Western European factions. But if the, if France is pressured by us, that might actually not happen. And we can consider continue to build ships until we beat the until we achieve the total naval force limits. Again, those galleys are an important insurance policy. We cannot cross the Strait of Gibraltar through the land bridge. Our only way to reinforce our provinces in even Africa or uh, uh, Spain is through transports. So it would be a total disaster. Losing our fleet and being cut off, which is why having so many galleys is absolutely critical. Our naval strategy has served us extremely well up until this point. Fortunately, our air is pretty weak, as is our current faction leader. But we have had our fair share of very good uh, monarchs, although we have also had our fair share of regency councils. I think that our technology rate will probably start slowing down now and going forward, owing to the fact that we seem to be getting quite unlucky with our leaders now, which is again a turn of pace. Overall, I've been very happy with the quality of leaders we've had up until this point, and that's really important. Uh, if you remember one of my first episodes when starting this series, I said it's really quite difficult playing as Granada if you get your fair share of bad leaders, because you're just going to fall so far behind to technology, and it's not really going to work out for you, so... Declining part of the Emirs. Still above 60% loyalty, just about. And I'll soon be approaching the point where I have to make a decision about my next idea group. Always ensuring that we maintain our good relations with the Ottomans, right up until the point that we decide to declare war on Tunis. Um... Again, we can declare war on a third party, call in the Ottomans, and then declare war on Tunis. But I can't really... Um, well, I suppose we could declare war on Castile, call in the Ottomans, and then declare war on Tunis. That might be a bit... That might be overstretching us a little bit if we're fighting two wars against Spain and Tunis. Uh, so we'll probably avoid that for now, but... It is one more idea that we could potentially employ going forward. Alright, I've hit my military monarch par cap, so it's time to get an idea. And I think that for the most part, another military idea would be a good idea. And we still got a really good one to unlock, which is defensive. Quantity, not so keen on, to be honest. Uh, we're not really encountering financial problems. I'd rather our armies just are straight up better. And given the fact that we have human idea groups and Granada National Ideas, it only costs 320 monarch par for each subsequent idea. So we're going to be able to get three of them right off the bat. Thus saving us 240 military monarch par there. Boost my stability a little bit as well. Pop projection is only 75 now, but I think this has to be a record in terms of how long I've been able to keep my pop projection for above 50 before. It'd be interesting to go back and see, but I think it's definitely been longer than about 150 years, maybe. 
yeah, maybe 125 years of uh, continuous above 50 power projection. And that would be worth a lot of Monarch power overall. And it's very important to have. And let's see, those provinces do have 75% autonomy, so they are suffering from the distance overseas penalty. Now that's interesting, but not all of them in Spain are. Intriguing indeed. I'm not exactly sure how that works. I'm trying to think about a logical explanation for that, actually. Um, perhaps provinces that are connected by a single sea tile to provinces that are not overseas do not get the overseas penalty, but provinces that don't are not. Now, that, that's obviously a handful to say, but these provinces next to my African holdings don't get the penalty because they're connected by a single sea tile. Obviously, we have territory in the north of Spain that is not connected by a single sea tile. And that's probably why they have the overseas penalty. Just speculation. Again, I'll read up in the rules so that I can see in the future what that's all about. Problem is, the game changes so much. Well, that's not actually a problem. It's a really good thing, but it does make things confusing. I'm really liking to look at the last idea group from defensive. Increased attrition combined with improved uh, fortifications is really going to make those uh, fortifications we have in the north of Spain really quite an obstacle for France to conquer. I'm not usually a, norm, a fan of fortifications, but there are a few places fortifications are useful, and one of those areas is definitely the Pyrenees. Another area is the Alps. Bohemians declare war on Austria, interesting to note. So where you got the Alps, Pyrenees, um, I guess there are places in Asia as well where fortifications are bound to be useful. Uh, but for the most part in Europe, I'm thinking mostly sticking to the Pyrenees and Alps. There goes our trader. Got a replacement lined up. We'll go ahead and pick him. I'm just sh uh, shuffling my troops about. Uh, speculating on a new and improved army composition. Black news indeed. Well, at least it's not a Regency Council. Our air is just below average. Our current faction leader is a little more below average. Yeah, they'll it'll do. And again, we've met we've made up we've made the good the tech lead the Western factions had against us, so uh getting a lot of monarch pot isn't as important now. I mean we've We've closed the gap, and we're, we probably have an excess of Monarch power at the moment, so... Um, unify Islam, <laughs> I wish. Constantinople, Medina, I see there as well. That would take a heck of a long time. And would be best achieved by the Ottomans. But for, I, for, theoretically, I, I'm sure I could do that with Granada, even after we've got the Granada in achievement. And we're doing pretty strong already. It wouldn't take long to... Uh, um, conquer eastwards and we'd have a lot of time but I think we'll stick to the re re conquest achievement for now Alright, one more year until the truce expires. That's part of the reason why I'm building up my armies again. Uh, this should be a pretty methodical war, and I want to get in early as soon as it, uh, as soon as the truce expires, so that we forgo the risk of a coalition being uh, triggered against us.
Boost the stability by one more. Tunis is still allied with the Ottomans. And it looks like they're still having some rebel problems. Um, they should be able to deal with that. They do have quite a number of fortifications. Hmm, now that's not good. Ottomans are currently declaring war against someone else. Uh, so I was just saying if we attack Tunis, would they join the call to arms? They would. Now we've got our new armies formed up. 32,000 troops in total. That is a very powerful force. Uh, lots of artillery, which I like. We're, stuck. we're getting to the stage now where we're cutting back on the amount of cavalry we employ since its effectiveness is really starting to diminish. Mostly it's about infantry to hold the front lines, a bit of cavalry for the flanking bonus, but for the most part, artillery. That's the name of the game now, all about the artillery. Well, the truce is about to expire any minute here. Got two more claims we can potentially fabricate. Speed up time, and hopefully this should be our easiest war yet. Didn't realise we had a truce with Brazil. I guess we did. Yeah, they were at wars. Okay, so that must mean that the truce with Castile and Portugal has expired. It does indeed. Uh, Aragon has entered a military coalition against us. Okay, let's attack Castile before anything silly happens, like they join the Mega Coalition. Declare war, don't need the Ottomans, we'll simply move in, and this should be the easiest war we fought uh, so far throughout the entire course of this guide. And with Mary Nostrum, the truth is we're probably going to have to do this all over again, since the strategy will no doubt have changed. Uh, I'll look forward to that. But for the meantime... Agricultural Revolution, gain base tax, that's always my, uh, that's always my decision of choice. So we'll split up our army here again. Siege down all the fortifications. Okay, that for that siege lasted 27 days. Wow, 27 days. That is pretty incredible. It must have had low maintenance or something interesting. I'll take it, though. I guess I should probably blockade. Get these sieges complete. Get as much territory as we can, and it's all about moving forward here. We're becoming tantalizingly close to our objective. I should probably split up a couple armies and deal with these individual regiments. Uh, I suppose that would be the proper thing to do. Don't want to risk them actually forming a large army and potentially recovering one of their sieges. So we'll do that. There's another occupation complete. Another siege also, 157 days. They have no allies, so this is going to be... This war might only last 365 days, come to think of it. Um, 
can't imagine it lasting much longer since we're currently sieging down every fortification they have. There goes our theologian. We'll have to replace him. He was a level 3. Our yearly inflation reduction advisor, my favorite advisor. We'll go ahead and pick him up. Now, we pretty much occupied all of Castile, uh, so they are a shadow of their former self because there's so much problems in the start of this guide. We really, we fought many wars that came down to the last, literally the last available loan, <laughs> basically, to defeat Morocco and Castile and Portugal, but how the tide has turned. Now, it looks like we're going to have them completely crushed. In about no more than a year. Yep, that war lasted about 380 days. Now they do have actually some territory. I'm trying to figure out where the heck it is. There it is. Uh, it is in. It is in Canada. Probably wait for that claim to fabricate, provided it hasn't been discovered. No, it hasn't. So that will save us about 15 uh, Minister of Monarch power, and then we'll sue for peace. I'm just burning down my Diplomatic Monarch power once again, ensuring that we don't hit that cap. It, you can see coastal provinces... Some of these provinces have 25% autonomy, some are zero, so that's from estates. But there was a couple of provinces in the north near Portugal that had 75%. Don't exactly know why that is, uh, but I'm going to have to figure it out. So we'll sue for peace. How much can we take? Not much. I'm not going to lie. Those are the last of Castile's high value provinces. Ah, uh, we can probably finish it off in two more wars. That's 100%, which is quite efficient. Mind you, Toledo's their last extremely valuable province, so... That's okay, that will fully enclose Castile uh, by a solid border, ensuring that there's no way that any other faction can invade Castile and start conquering territory. This is probably the best acquisitions from the point of view of increasing my own economy. So it, it will probably go for this one. Yep, yeah, we'll select it. There we go. Easiest war we ever fought. Uh, and we will go about calling those provinces and... Basically, just do that a couple more times and it's as good as one. At least in Spain... We're still going to have to deal with Tunis. It's going to be interesting. But for now, I'm fairly happy with that. And we'll wait for war exhaustion to deplete to zero before we go a bit about coring those provinces. You can actually see very low unrest despite having newly conquered those provinces. Uh, in no small part thanks to the effectiveness of humanist ideas. Bunch of reduced revolt risks. And all adds up. Go ahead and get the next diplomatic tech level. Low army maintenance. Peasants upset once more. 
Seem to be getting a lot of these, to, uh, these events. Uh, Al Mansh, that's not too far away. There we go. Uh, I'll need to increase my... You know the drill, folks. See if we can plant our army there, and hopefully that should be some dead peasants. Decline of the merchant classes, lose influence, I'm fine with that to be honest. Yeah, those are some dead peasants. Another glorious victory for our Granada armies. Taking to look, look. I know I've built a lot. I've constructed a lot of buildings already, but uh, keeping an eye on any province, especially newly conquered, that might have the potential to get a lot of income from production buildings, namely the workshop. I haven't built many manufactories, mostly because I can't afford it. But that is probably something I will consider, depending on how much longer. Nobility and perm seize power. Yeah, that's something. Wow, Russia's getting crushed. Yeah, that's the Ottomans for you. Um, pick another idea group. Yeah, manufacture is obviously one of the strongest buildings in the game. But it's a question of money. We don't really have the money for it yet. Even though it would be a tremendous boost to our income. We might get there. We're certainly earning a lot of money now. Look at those defensiveness, folks. 77%, 52%. Those are going to be some tough fortifications to crack. And if I keep building them up to these next levels, that is going to be a very robust deterrent to France declaring war on us. By contrast, if we didn't have those fortifications, France could literally just sweep down, occupying my provinces, and it would take me uh, a lot more effort to counterattack and actually win that war. My goodness, Tunis is still dealing with rebels. They're having a bit of a hard time over there. Uh, it's nothing much I can exploit now, but I'm keeping my eye, eye out, especially constantly checking to see if the strength of the Ottoman Tunis alliance continues to hold, because if it doesn't, I'll be in there pretty quick to get my coveted Mallorca, which is a necessary territory we need to get this achievement. Alright folks, I think I'm going to go ahead and put a card in here. We haven't got much longer to go. We're very, very close. 